We have talked many times about how plasma can organize itself. I have done some simple videos outlining double layers, and we have seen how double layers play a critical role in understanding the electric sun model and most concepts within the electric universe. It was therefore with great delight that Jim passed this paper to me. Although the paper itself may seem a little dry, the underlying principles should help you understand double layers much better and see many links to the concepts we have already discussed, including those from the electric sun. This paper is a mainstream paper looking at surface tension in double layers. Through experimentation, they were able to come to some remarkable conclusions, and I hope you too will see the profound implications this might have. An electric field applied to a randomly moving plasma can give rise to a self-organization phenomena in plasmas. It creates a new state of matter where the matter is more ordered than it was before. The matter will tend to segregate itself from the surrounding using a double layer. In this paper, the scientists studied a particular type of configuration where the plasma is surrounded by a spherical double layer. The configuration has the rather interesting name ball of fire. It is created in a laboratory using a plasma diode in front of an anode and is formed when a certain threshold is reached. The ball of plasma behaves as a structure whose self-consistency and stability are related to the surface tension. The double layers that surround the sphere act like a membrane with a measurable surface tension. It is able to balance the kinetic pressure of the electrons, positive ions and neutrals. In some sense, this plasma bubble may be compared to a water droplet. So why do double layers have surface tension? This is not a new concept, and previous work on laser plasma interactions has made this link before. Contrary to the surface tension in liquids, the cohesion forces work as long as the current ensures the flux of electrons required for the continuous assembly of the double layer. There are many arguments to consider the ball fire as the result of a phase transition process, or a nucleation process. Both the ball fire and the liquid drop appear spontaneously and coexist with the phase from which they arose. Both are protected from the surroundings by a quasi-spherical membrane, and this is essential in maintaining them. It has already been suggested that the liquid drop membrane is in fact an electric double layer. In the case of the liquid to liquid vapor interface, the forces responsible for the surface tension are directed towards the liquid interior because the liquid has a greater density than its vapors. In the case of ball fire, the electrostatic forces acting on the electrons are directed towards the inner positive sheet of the double layer that covers the core of the ball fire. In the experiments they conducted, they found that when these ball fires arose, there was a hysteresis phenomenon for which the double layers are responsible. We also find this hysteresis process in the nucleation process of the droplet formation as well. It has been experimentally proved that these double layers exist in spite of electrons recombining with positive ions. It proves that there was a dynamical equilibrium established between the generation and the accumulation of charges and the recombination and diffusion of the two kinds of charges. More specifically, the electrons from the surrounding plasma that have enough kinetic energy to surpass the negative part of the double layer will be accelerated in the double layer's electric field. So they will reach the core with sufficient energy to cause ionization of the neutrals in the core. After the ionization process, a part of the electron's kinetic energy remains as thermal energy, and this will cause it to diffuse outwards as a result of thermal diffusion. Some of the remaining electrons will then recombine with the positive ions. This process will reach an equilibrium state where the net positive charge in the center remains constant. In a collisional plasma, at relatively high pressure, the double layer becomes able to sustain itself. This happens when the potential drop across it reaches the ionization potential of the working gas. From the experimental results, they were able to confirm that these stationary, stable, spherical double layers that formed around the plasma were electrically neutral as a whole. The outer part of the double layer was negatively charged, and the inner surface would be positively charged. 
They then analyzed the structure and pointed out that in a linear double layer, the charges on each side of the layer must be equal. On a spherical one, this cannot be the case, and it can be seen that the outer layer will have a more negative charge than the inner layer. This means that the difference in charge must be located in the core. This they also verified experimentally. What is even more interesting is that in their experiment, they also discovered that the double layer itself had a capacitance. They also found that there was a critical point at which the surface tension would go to zero. So why is it that I think that this paper is important? Well, firstly, it is an external paper that confirms some of the behavior that we see when we look at the sun. It also helps to explain the conditions for the formation of these types of double layers and why they form and how they remain stable. When we look at a supernova explosion, it may help to explain why we see an outward expulsion of material after the surge. If the double layer breaks across the surface of the sun, all the positive ions would have nothing to hold them back. The idea that there is a certain tension that the double layers can exert is important. The fact that they have a capacitance is also an interesting concept and is worth exploring in more depth. I think that this also provides some additional layers to the Walter Ridge experiment. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.